So this is an this is a video based off of an image I made, mostly without any jokes in mind. I put some jokes at the top just because I won, but it's also half serious. This is my Persona Power Rankings chart, and I think it's pretty accurate as far as these go. Yeah, Persona's not really a community that likes to get into like the, the power scaling, like who's stronger than who kinds of arguments, but on occasions I will see it, so I figured it'd be a neat idea to kind of talk about it. All right, so where do you, you want to start from the top and work down, or start from the uh, bottom and let's, work up? Let's start at the bottom and go up. All right, F tier is pretty self-explanatory. It's the personalist yeah. losers tier. Just regular average Joes who can't even participate in persona-based warfare. Yeah, there is one personalist character who's a bit higher up here, but even then, like, he has special- he is a very special case. I guess you can make your own little, like, funsies tier list with just the personalist characters. That would be pretty great! Yeah, yeah, canon Chihiro Fushimi in SSSS tier, obviously. But again, they are meaningless. Above them is E tier with Strega. Strega is all basically cancer patients. They're all very sick little boys and girls. Yeah, their personas actively hurt to use, and Chidori, while she has a unique ability going on for her, she is also suffering from this persona sickness. See, I think these guys should maybe be a spot higher, because in Persona 3, the implication was that these guys are actually pretty strong, and it does take a pretty decent bit of effort for them, like, even all working together to fight these guys. No, but, like, all their fights were jokes. <laughs> <laughs> like, gameplay-wise or story-wise? Because that's gameplay, two, two gameplay very different. Gameplay-wise and story-wise. Like, they weren't an obstacle. The only time they ever got in the way of a mission was when they were worried about Shinji, who was going to die anyways, need I remind you. Otherwise, his persona would have stopped the bullet like it's fucking Star Platinum. And when they caused rocks to fall, and anyone could admit, a Mishima could have pushed some rocks over. <laughs> yeah. So Strega does nothing too special to warrant them even being on the same tier of power as the miscellaneous Persona 4 Persona users and Sho Minazuki. Sho is a- So- so that counts as basically everybody who is not the protagonist, right? Everyone who is not the protagonist or occupying another slot on this list. Okay. So, like, this is where Kanji, Chie, Yukiko, Yosuke, and I guess Teddy could be placed a bit higher, but you need to make a good argument for him. So why is Sho on the exact same level as these guys? Because of that plume of dusk he has in his fucking skull. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's capable of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a Persona user using just two swords. And later on, he does get a Persona of his own, but I'm mostly counting this as pre-Persona. Okay. He also has some interesting feats in uh, Persona 4 Ultimax's story, but he is enhanced at that time, so I don't consider them to be his own power. At, the, at this level, like, you can be called in for something of value. Yeah. <laughs> You're like a shadow operative intern. Yeah. Like, you're around that level, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Above them are the Persona 3 and 5 Persona users. Again, not counting anyone who is worthy of an exception. So what do these fine gentlemen and gals do that's, like, makes them definitively better than a Persona 4 Persona user? Alright, either... Alright. The Persona 3 characters, while they do need an evoker to use their Personas under normal circumstances... They're capable of using their personas outside of a persona zone. As yeah. well, a lot of them have some form of combat training. The Persona 5 cast, while they don't have formal training, they have a lot more, like, stressful battles. Every heist they do is a lot more than any of the Persona 4 characters had to go through. To complete a single dungeon. Uh -huh. They're more crafty, and Futaba could drop a fucking satellite on people if she felt like it. Would you argue with them being on the same level? <laughs> uh, I'd say, like, a fight between those two is gonna go a lot, like, more evenly than a fight between, like, the Persona 3 and 4 guys or, like, 4 and 5 fighting. Yeah, like, they aren't worthy of moving up to the next tier. Next. So this this next one fascinates me. Why Risei is two tiers above the rest of her compatriots? Simple. 
Her persona has three fucking acts. Okay. So you have regular old scanner Himiko, who is yeah. a really, really good general use scanning persona. But then she gets a battle mode, and then a fucking stage mode, which was capable of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a Sigiri somehow. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure of the power of her three personas, but she seems to have really high development potential. <laughs> right, so so it's less about her, her power overall necessarily, it's more like <laughs> what she can be capable of. Yeah. And also the Persona 1 and 2 Persona users who right. use their Personas in the real world rather effortlessly. As yeah, well, just freely. As well as being able to switch between multiple Personas. Next up is A tier, and this is where we get some big boys with big boy stuff. One of these boys is very interesting to me, so why don't you go down the boys? So first, I'm going to talk about Yu Narukami and Toru Dachi, because they are, for all intents and purposes given the same personas. They got the same ones from Professor Izanami. They fight toe-to-toe, -to -toe, like, completely evenly in uh, Ultimax at some point. Yeah. He was also capable of harnessing the power of friendship, like, really well. <laughs> and he's just, like, the Chad of Chads. This is base-level wild card at work. And Adachi, despite not having the wild card, has- I been... think Adachi does have the wild card, but he's just an idiot, and he doesn't know how to use it. That is worth discussing. <laughs> yeah, at some point, that'll probably be a video. Yeah, Adachi does have the ability to, like, casually talk to shadows and stuff. Like, he bosses them around in his dungeon. Yeah. Has them play games with you. That is a TV World exclusive ability, but he is very high up there, as far as Persona users go. Next up, it, I'm, next up on the characters I'm going to talk about is Labyrinth. She is a prototype anti-shadow weapon, and being a robot... Yeah, that just makes her a killing machine. Like, physically speaking, she is a, a weapon of destruction. She's got a lot of really helpful tools up her sleeve. And while she doesn't... I don't know how experienced she is using a persona, she can use it to hurt people. And that's all she really needs. And next up are the two, like, more debatable characters here. Persona Cross Detective Naoto and Junpei Iori. I think Naoto should be, like, uh, at least a tier higher. Persona Cross Detective Naoto suffers from a similar problem to okuyasu from jojo okay her persona is technically one of the best things ever but she's limited by her own thinking okay the persona cross detective she basically only uses the persona for support purposes because that's what she thinks girls are supposed to do <laughs> okay her own like gender gender roles which she is adhering to is what's holding her back Okay, so through the power of sexism, she belongs in A-tier. Yes. <laughs> Her persona, by the way, for those who didn't read it, has a special ability called Ability Tune, which can manipulate variables of other personas. Right. So to me, that means that in a battle with any persona user, like, she wins. Pretty much. Yes. So that's why I'm thinking she should be an S-tier, but apparently she's too fucking stupid to realize no, you've got the most broken thing ever. Yeah. She doesn't want to, she doesn't fight people, because that's what, that's what boys do. Right, only boys fight, yeah. With their, with their penises. <laughs> yeah, they fight with their penises, which she doesn't have. Yes. And Junpei Iori, the man. The reason why he's higher than his companions is because he has one of the most interesting awakenings in the Persona series, like second awakenings. Mm -hmm. When he gets his tier 2 Persona, his Persona fuses with Chidori's. And Chidori's had some interesting techniques up its sleeve, like giving life. Junpei basically has, like, two lives to work with. Yeah, he's got, like, a passive regeneration power. Yeah. He has a healing factor, plus he's just generally really good, as all Persona 3 Persona users are. Plus he has the added benefit of being very difficult to kill. Yeah, so that's why he is in A tier. You could make an argument that he belongs a tier lower, but I think he belongs to your higher. Okay. Having a special ability generally puts you two spots above your companions. S tier, Tatsuya Swo. Swoos? Tatsuya Swoos. Uh, in Persona 2 Eternal Punishment, Apollo has the ability to stop time. Mm -hmm. I think that's all that really needs to be said, but he also- Yeah, it's a pretty good ability. Yeah. He also has, like, the, the pain of remembering and shit, and if he reminds his friends that he exists, then the universe ends. That's not something in his favor, I guess? I mean, tech- uh, That- that would probably end up in, like, a draw match. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. So yeah, he has that 
ace in the hole. Plus, generally, he's talented at fighting. And he has a motorcycle. So that's cool. <laughs> the motorcycle is what really puts him in S tier. Yeah. The Persona 5 protagonist, much for the same reason as the Persona 5 Persona users being a tier above the Persona 4 Persona users, he is a tier above Yunara Kami. He also more directly defeats his big opponent at the end. Yeah, he fucking shoots him in the head and ends and his existence. And while that is a power of friendship feat, that is a power of friendship feat that is more tight to him than use. Next up is Igus. Very much the same reason for being here as Labrys, but with the added bonus of being a wild card as of Persona 3, the answer. She doesn't use this in Arena, so it's unclear if she still has it. Or if she lost the shit, yeah. Yeah. Though she does change to her original Persona, which she uses as a big ol' fucking gun. <laughs> and I think that her being able to change her Persona's forms makes her a tier above usage than the others. Yeah, she's got, like, the, the physiology of being a death machine, like Labyrus, plus the combat experience from years at that point of doing shadow operative stuff. And wild card. And she's a wild card user, yes. Yeah, like, the only reason why she's only an S tier is because everyone above this is... A madman. Yes. Speaking of madman, Shadow Labyrus. Shadow Lambrus is very interesting in Persona 4 Arena because she has the power to basically create a fighting game. <laughs> like, she can change people's words, trap them in a fucking fighting game arena. She has quite possibly the most interesting set of skills that a shadow has like, that we've seen from a shadow. And I think that puts them above where most shadows would be, which I would put it F tier along with the other Persona list user losers. Not even an E tier? I guess you could put them in E tier. But yeah, E tier. But Shadow Labrys is just so many leagues better than all the other shadows. Plus she yeah, has, she's like, definitely the like one of the most advanced shadows. Like Menace was a pretty weird, complicated type of shadow. Mm -hmm. But like Shadow Labrys would probably just fucking kill her. Yeah. Plus she has her own weird almost a persona in mm -hmm. Asterios. Yeah. Well, a, sh a shadow having a persona isn't necessarily like a crazy weird thing. Like Teddy has that, Metis has that. Yeah. And finally, Goro Okechi, who is shown to be like, it took all the fan themes to take him down. Yeah, they say that. Yes. Also, he has. And it's all. It's also implied that he's he solos every single one of the palaces he goes to, whereas with the thieves, it took the, all of their combined efforts and planning to get through them. Yes. And. It is implied that he has the wild card as well. Yeah, because he can switch between Robin Hood and uh, Loki. Yes. So Goro has a lot of things going for him. Plus he has that berserk thing. Yeah, he can make people go crazy. Yeah. Which is a good power. Yeah, Goro has a lot of things going for him. But again, he's in S tier because SS tier is so many leagues above him. In SS tier, we have Igor and the Velvet Room. Nyx, Izanami, Murray, and Hino Kagatsuchi. So now we're getting into, like, the actual gods of the verse. Yes. Igor and the Velvet Room are here because they are capable- they are fully capable of handling any of these other things. It's just they choose not to. Yeah. Because it, it doesn't concern them, yeah. usually. Elizabeth is more than enough to seal Nyx, and I'm sure they could have just told Izanami- they just slapped Izanami around with Igor's nose. And solve that problem. Like, here's the thing about Elizabeth, is that she is capable of one-shotting Erebus, who is a, an accumulation of all of humanity's grief and desire to be dead, right? Yes. So that is at least around Nyx's level. Because yeah. Erebus knocks on the door, says, da da, hey, what's going on, Nyx? All the people want to die. And then Nyx merges with death and kills everybody. Yeah. I wasn't sure where Erebus would be. He'd probably be in this tier. Nyx, you, we've explained, Nyx is death. Yeah. They, he can be sealed, but he is death. He awaits us all. Izanami, actual death goddess, kills 1,000 people a day because she has to. And she created the Fog and the Sigiris, one of which managed to make the tier list. The other Sigiris were really weird and not really worth including. <laughs> yeah, Amino Sigiri is probably like... Mm, I don't know, where would you put Amino Sigiri? I mean... 
he takes he's between S and SS tier, but not by he's not too much higher than S tier, honestly. I feel Goro could have sold low domino C. <laughs> it's just a fucking fog machine. Yeah. An I beam. It's a powerful fog machine, but it's that's all it is. Yeah. And the one from Dancing All Night, I don't know what the fuck that thing's deal was. <laughs> Murray being another half of Izanami deserves the same tier. Plus she seemed to inherit Izanami's like weather powers. And weather powers are very dangerous. Yeah, the weather's bullshit. Yeah. She could ca she could make thunder happen in the real world. <laughs> and what about Hino Kagetsuchi, the big fireball? Alright, Hino Kagetsuchi, you all forgot about him. But it required Yunarukami and Adachi to fuse their wild card personas into a fucking dick dock sword. And that was enough to allow them to damage it. And even then, it was a fucking struggle. He, cap he was capable of bestowing Sho a persona, creating a bunch of fake shadows, including a fake shadow Labrys, as well as creating fighting gamery. Of the Sagiris, he has the most interesting, versatile skill set. I felt that was worth including. On to SSS tier. These two are on the same level because they are supposed to be. <laughs> Even though we've seen Necro Naryeptrotep do a lot more than Philemon, it's implied that they are equals. And Philemon is obviously the master of the Velvet Room. Who, like, he's Igor's boss. Yeah. So it only makes sense that he would be a stronger entity. Yes. Foggy on Maki's, like, deal. I remember Philemon being like, all right, this is something I don't want to fuck with. Okay, so here's the deal with Maki, is that Maki, I she's okay in that tier, but the problem is that it's in a very particular circumstance. Mm -hmm. The only time when Maki would be of that power level is when she's, like, she's hooked up to a machine mm -hmm. that basically creates a universe where sh her subconscious is in charge. Yes. So it's, it's her own dream world. So in theory, if she wanted to, if you're in that universe, she could probably just think you out of existence. Yes. And that's the circumstances in which I put that Maki. Okay. And Makoto Yuki with the universe arcana. Capable of sealing Nyx, and I'm sure plenty of other things. He is... Yeah, only character to ever get the universe arcana. Yeah. We don't know what exactly that means, we know it puts him above Nyx, which is the... Concept. Igor barely understands what the hell the Universe Arcana is. Yeah. He's like, this is really cool. Yeah. Main character Kuhn, Door Kuhn, whatever you want to call him, he's capable of things that are beyond comprehension. <laughs> and that's interesting. The biggest boys that are actual boys, Kronos, Zeus, and Yagdabrauth. All three of these fascinate me. So why are these guys a, a tier higher than even, like, Philemon and Makoto? Kronos managed to, like, keep Philemon in a fucking spider web in his universe. That's true. He did do that. Yeah. He just kept Philemon there like a fucking bitch. <laughs> he is a stronger Nyx, and that's scary. <laughs> Zeus... I, for, I completely forgot Zeus's deal. I kind of just threw him here because I remember him being a big deal. I know at some point, doesn't he like possess Elizabeth? Yeah. So that like by default makes him at least bare minimum an SS tier. Yeah, but I think possession overriding Elizabeth's fucking will puts him would, would put him in SSS tier. And we don't know the full extent of his abilities. And like he came there, I think, the gist was he came there from another fucking universe. So if he can, like, just jump universes if he felt like... He, 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 yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. And finally, Yabba Dabba Doo. Y'all the battle battle. So why is Yabba Dabba Dabby so much higher than Nyx? Like, to, to me, Nyx seems like it would be a greater threat to existence than Y'all the Balth, necessarily. Y'all the Balth is law. <laughs> True. Like, he is the closest the Megami Tensei series will get, no, Megami, the Persona series will get to Megami Tensei. He controls every, he controls the thoughts of people, and he just played Persona 5 protagonist and Akechi like a fucking fiddle. And the only reason he managed to be stopped is because of something it, he also managed to seal up Igor? <laughs> and I'm guessing, if he can seal up Igor, and Philemon just sort of is like, yeah, this is okay. 
that puts him above Philemon too. Yeah, like I'd assume if he can make such such an e- such easy work out of Igor, and naturally by extension a velvet room attendant, Lavenza, who we can assume is probably at least as strong as Elizabeth, who can one shot Erebus, who is as strong as Nyx, then Yaldabaoth is pretty strong. Yeah, and like Philemon, if he's if he wasn't like what was he doing while Yaldabaoth was just taking over his fucking velvet room yeah you'd assume he would step in and be like please don't do that yeah no he doesn't even philemon doesn't even show up in persona 5 the thing that ties the series together did not show up like he wanted no part in this now either this is because he was busy being in another fucking web or he didn't want anything to do with Yaldabaoth. He didn't want to get in his way. Right, because Yaldabaoth is like, he's very, very, very similar to YHVH from Shin Megami Tensei, because they're both like weird amalgamations of people's desire to be controlled. Yes. And as Persona 5 proves, that's an extremely powerful thing to have dominion over. Yes. And it's only stopped by the SS SSS tier, which contains the two almost joke things on this tier list yes the power of friendship and plot bullets plot bullets can kill anything and sometimes they don't take the form of a bullet sometimes they take the form of a car (laughs) or a ray of truth yes whatever your plot bullet is it can kill anything (laughs) and then of course we have the wonderful power of friendship the power of friendship is what's to blame for persona 5 protagonist pulling out the big old gun and shooting yelled about. It's what's to blame for you summoning Izanagi no Okami. And it's what's to blame for Dorkun getting the universe arcana. Like, in in Persona, it doesn't matter if you're Strega and you want to fuck with Zeus. Mm -hmm. If if Strega believed in their bonds with each other, Zeus would be fucking dead. Yeah, all you need is the power of friendship and you can overcome anything. Because that's how the series works. (laughs) Dorkun is above you despite both of them using a power of friendship feat is because Dorkun managed to keep his power of friendship power up, whereas you has not, and even then uses just a persona. Same for the Persona 5 protagonist. Yeah, Makoto's is like some weird cosmic bullshit that's like beyond the persona. Yeah, that is the Persona power rankings chart that I made. Or is there anything I'm missing? Uh, no, not really. Pretty good list overall. Mm-hmm. 